Hello and welcome to another episode on the sofa. I'm Monia and tonight we're celebrating our January clan of clan Fraser. So Fraser's are a famous clan having been present at almost every major Scottish battle as uh, we'll discuss later. There is some debate as to the origins of the name although there is little doubt that the clan originated in France. As we delve into their history, we would love to hear any stories that you might wish to share. So please do get in touch with us if you're a Fraser. So welcome everyone to the first on the sofa of 2021. How exciting. <laughs> so I'm Anna. I've not been on the sofa for a while, so I'm delighted to be back. Um, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit of history behind the name. So the clan Fraser consists of two branches. There's the Frasers and the Frasers of Lovett. And each one has a different clan chief, clan crest, and a motto. However, they both have the same origins and ancestry. The earliest spellings of the Fraser name are found in the former province of Anjou in France, and now broadly corresponding to the region of Maine et Loire, if you've ever been there. Um, and de Fresel, de Frisel, and de Friselier were common spellings, and the name Friselier is still an everyday name in what was once the Anjou region. There's further ev evidence to support the connection to this location in an 18th century document called La Dictionnaire de la Noblesse. This document states that Simon Frizel was born into the noble Frizel family from Anjou, and this same Simon Frizel, struggling with my words this evening, according to the text, established himself in Scotland at some point after 1030, and his descendants became known as Fraser rather than Frizel. So it's another mm -hmm. point is that the word fres, which means strawberry in French, um, is the origin of the, the surname Fraser. So one particularly quaint tale is that the forefather of the Fraser clan was a Frenchman named Julius de Berry. He, he gifted strawberries to Charles Simplex, the King of France. He loved them so much that he granted de Berry with a coat of arms featuring three strawberries strawberry flowers, which Emily's got on the screen there, and he commanded him to change his name to Frizz, which um, must have been very good strawberries, I think, <laughs> if, uh, if his whole uh, coat of arms and surname now revolved around them. So today the Fraser coat of arms actually still features the three strawberry flowers, so there might be some truth behind that tale, which I think is rather a lovely origin story. <laughs> it is. We do love a strawberry, don't we? Maybe not mm -hmm. at this time of year. So, as per the French manuscript, La Dictionnaire de la Noblesse, the first Fraser recorded in Scotland was Simon Fraser, who arrived in Scotland and held lands at Keith in East Lothian. It's thought that this particular Simon Fraser may have come to Scotland as part of a mass immigration from in and around Normandy during the reign of William the Lion between roughly 1165 and 1214. And from East Lothian, the Frasers moved into Tweeddale in the 12th and 13th century before heading north to Stirling, Angus, Inverness and Aberdeen. Historically, the Frasers of Lubbock, Lubbock have been extremely prominent in the local politics and military of Invernessshire and the name is still really common in that area. Overall, it, Fraser is the most common surname in Scotland but the sixth most common in the Inverness region. Uh, hello to Luke. Right. Um, it's nice to see you here. Hope you're ready to get into some of the more bloody history of the Frasers as we delve into some of the battles. Um, so history does tell us that Frasers loved a battle and you'll soon see why they are known for that. There were many Frasers throughout the years, but one in particular, Sir Simon Fraser of Oliver and Needpath, was a prominent player in the wars of Scottish independence. Um, he was also known by the Patriot. Um, Sir Simon was first on the side of the Red Column before fighting for William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. Sir Simon was one of the commanders who led the Scots to victory at the Battle of Roslyn in 1303 with a small army. And if you live in Scotland or are visiting uh, eventually when you can again, you can go to Neepeth Castle which Emily's got on there. It's rather beautiful. Um, it's actually very near the lovely border town of Peebles and you can stay in an amazing suite within the castle and there are cottages as well in the grounds and um, so you can put up some guests there as well. 
and we actually did a photo shoot there a few years ago and it really is a beautiful hidden gem so well worth seeing sort of off the the typical tourist track. Roslyn's also a really interesting place to visit it's only seven miles south of Edinburgh and it was made famous by Dan novel and the sub uh, the subsequent film The Da Vinci Code it's probably why you might have heard of it and uh, most of the interior scenes of the chapel were filmed at Roslyn and actor Tom Hanks actually said few locations in film are so delightful and few destinations live up to their billing but Roslyn Chapel was all one could imagine or hope for and I agree with him I, I went for the first time a couple of years ago and it's uh, a bit spooky with some of the stories that the the guide will tell you but it's very beautiful so well worth a trip um, when you're in Scotland eventually. <laughs> so we digress into a bit of tourism there but back to the phrase when they're fighting. So Sir Simon also led troops at the Battle of Methven in 1306 alongside Robert the Bruce and it's said that Sir Fraser saved Bruce's life at three separate points during this battle. In fact, it's suggested that the three crowns which appear in the coat of arms of the Frasers of Lovett, which are up on screen there, were awarded to Sir Simon for his bravery in saving Bruce's life. And later in 1306, Sir Simon was captured by the English and was hung, drawn and quartered for his participation in the Wars of Independence. So gruesome stuff. I didn't mess around that <laughs> Uh, hello to Mike from Duns joining us as well tonight. I uh, hope you're enjoying learning about the, the different Frasers, Mike. So Sir Alexander Fraser of Tuch Fraser and Cowie, a cousin of Sir Simon, was also heavily involved in the Wars of Independence. And he fought at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314 and actually married Mary Bruce, who was Robert the Bruce's sister. He was also awarded the title of Chamberlain of Scotland, which is a role uh, ranked as the third great officer of state. The current chief of the clan Fraser and head of the Frasers of um, Pil Pilarth, sorry, is a descendant of Sir Alexander. The Frasers were also involved in several clan wars, uh, particularly against the Macdonalds and the Mackenzies. They just really loved a battle, so it seemed they started some uh, when there weren't any others going on. Several accounts note that the Frasers of Lovett supported Clan Monroe against Clan Mackenzie at the Battle of Bielich, Nambroig, in roughly 1450, which was a battle between Scottish clans for the lands of northwest Rosshire. And then in 1544, the Frasers fought at the Battle of the Shirts against Clan MacDonald again, but this time over the chiefship of Clan Ranald, which is a sect of Clan MacDonald. And the Frasers led by Hugh Fraser, the chief of Clan Fra Fraser of Lovett, um, and supported his nephew, Ranald Galda, as the rightful chief. So the Frasers joined forces with the Gordons to attach the, attack the MacDonalds and make Ranald the clan chief. But the, the expedition, can't speak, was cut short, however, and the Frasers and the Gordons decided to split their men for the return journey, which proved to be a big mistake the Macdonalds ambushed the Frasers, but their 500 men far outnumbering the Frasers' 300. The battle was a bloody one, with only eight survivors from the Macdonald side. Seems brutal from a 500 start. And only five on the Fraser side. So Hugh Fraser and his son were sadly amongst the many Fraser casualties. And then in... 1562, the Frasers of Lovett fought famously for Mary, Queen of Scots, at the Siege of Inverness after she was refused entry to Inverness Castle by the Gordons. Troublesome ones, these Gordons. According to an account written by George Buchanan, a great number of the ancient Scots, partly by persuasion and partly of their own accord, flocked around her, particularly the Frasers and the Monroes, the bravest of these tribes. These two clans won the castle for their queen and Alexander Gordon was hanged for treason with his head displayed on the castle as a warning. Lovely. Another bit of brutal history. <laughs> <laughs> so the Frasers were prominent supporters of the Jacobite uprising and were on the front lines at the Battle of Falkirk and the Battle of Culloden both in 1746. 
So Charles Fraser of Inverlochy led the Frasers into battle at Culloden and was unfortunately mortally wounded during the battle. So Emily's got a picture on there that's the um, the clan Fraser stone at the site of the Battle of Culloden, sort of in memory of the, um, the clansmen who died there. So as one of Scotland's most prominent and ferocious clans, it's no surprise that the Frasers held many castles over the years. And so we've got a bit of information about a couple of them. So first up is Castle Dooney, um, which came into the Frasers' possession in the late 13th century, but was besieged by English, for English forces in 1303. And in the 1650s, it was once again held the target of English forces, captured and burned by the forces of Oliver Cromwell during their invasion of Scotland, which uh, partially explains why Emily's photo doesn't appear to have a standing castle in it. <laughs> the castle was inherited by Simon Fraser, 11th Lord of Lovett in 1699, and had commissioned a new castle to be built at Dooney, but he was captured and executed after the Battle of Culloden, leaving the estate to be destroyed. So the estate was later returned to his son, yet another Simon, and the castle was rebuilt as Beaufort Castle in 1882 and then was sold again in 1994. So it's got a long history, that one, of uh, getting going up and down a little bit. <laughs> but it is still there today, so it's done well. And the Frasers also owned a castle that was situated on Cherry Island. So a lovely picture of it there that Emily's brought up. And this is the only island in Loch Ness. And legend has it that a brownie lived there. And this is not a chocolate brownie that I like to have after my supper. This is a special brownie, a household spirit from folk Scottish folklore that supposedly came out at night to perform a variety of chores for the owner. I think we could do with a few of them. Who would want you to do some jobs for us? A few brownies. So other castles held by the Frasers included Cross Castle in Invernessshire and Ertlis and Moniac Castles, which are both near Bewley in Invernessshire. And Breelig House, which is um, in the same area, has been one of the seats of the Frasers since the 17th century. And the Frasers of Breelig still live there today. It's quite impressive. We've held it that long. <laughs> so as we know, there are two different Fraser clans, which Anna mentioned earlier, and that means that there are two different clan crests and clan mottos as well. So a lot of choice if you're a Fraser. So the clan Fraser crest features strawberry plants, uh, which we mentioned earlier with the, the potential origin story. The clan motto is all my hope is in God, whereas the crest the Frasers of Love It features a buck's head with the with the motto Je Place, which translates as I am ready. So Emily's got both of the uh, the clan crests on the screen there for you to see. The current chief of the Frasers is Marjorie Flora Fraser, who's the 21st Lady Saltoon. The chief of the Frasers of Love It is Simon Fraser, the 16th Lord Love It and 26th Clan Chief. And now on to obviously our favourite topic is the tartans. So there are a multitude of clan Fraser tartans to choose from, 14 variations in total. So if you're lucky enough to Fraser as your family tartan, then you're spoilt for choice. So um, Emily's popping them up on screen here. So the Fraser um, Ancient, Modern and Weathered all feature the red hues, which are the most um, commonly known about of the Fraser tartans. Um, and then the Fraser dress, which is also sometimes called Fraser red, which you can see coming up there, actually has a white um, stripe through it, um, through the red square. Um, and then there is the Fraser of Lovett tartan, which is almost like a reverse of the Fraser tartan, where the green, the red and green are prominent um, rather than the red and blue. And then finally, you have your hunting and weather variations, um, which are much more muted and natural tones and um, worn. Someone has got a nice swatch of that there. Um, and these have been made very famous by a certain um, TV series, which we will talk about a little bit later on. But beautiful colours in those tasks. 
So now on to some of the very famous faces of um, the freezers around the world. So we've picked out a few of our favourites. So from Scotland to Canada and Australia to America, these are just a few freezers, famous ones you might recognise. Um, so first off, um, we thought we'd talk about Georgina Fraser Newell, um, who is the lady who wrote the Fraser's Drinking Song. And this song was adopted as a welcome song by the Clan Fraser Society of Canada and was sung to music compo composed by John Lewis Brown at the Society's annual gatherings. And Georgina was the bardess of the Society in Canada and was enormously proud of her Fraser heritage, keen to call herself a black Fraser due to her dark hair and eyebrows which were said to be the mark of a true Fraser. So next up is Brendan Fraser. He's an American actor with mixed roots and his ancestors actually hail back from Ireland, Scotland, Germany and the Czech Republic. He's got a lot of different cultures in there. His first major box office success was in 1997 when he starred in George of the Jungle, which debuted at number two at the box office upon its release. And his biggest commercial success to date um, were actually The Mummy, released in 1999, and then the sequel, The Mummy Returns, which was released two years later. So on from screen stars to sports stars. Um, and Neil Fraser, who was born in 1933 in Melbourne in Australia, is the former number one amateur male tennis player. And he holds the record as the last man to have completed the Triple Crown, which means that he won the singles, doubles and mixed doubles titles at a Grand Slam tennis tournament. He managed to do this on two consecutive occasions, so doubly impressive. He did this at the US Open in 1959 and 1960. No player has achieved this at any Grand Slam tournament since. And in 1984, he was elected to the International Tennis Hall of Fame and was awarded the Philip Chartres Award for Outstanding Achievements in Tennis. Very impressive. So next up, we've got Tomiko Fraser, who was born in New York City in 1968 and came into the world of modelling far older than many of her peers. She was discovered by a model scout at the age of 25 while working in a restaurant and went on to front many campaigns for major brands, including Gap, Tommy Hilfiger and Old Navy. She's most recognised, however, for her work with Maybelline, as she was the first African-American model to star as the face of the makeup brand. And this is my favourite um, famous Fraser, and this is Groovy Bob. So Groovy Bob also known as Robert Fraser, was a renowned art dealer who played a key role in London's cultural scene of the mid to late 1960s. And he established the Robert Fraser Gallery near Square in 1962, and the gallery helped launch the career of many prominent British and American artists, including Eduardo Pelosi, Andy Warhol, Gilbert and George, Bridget Riley, and Peter Blake. So Fraser was a real trendsetter during the swinging 60s and Paul McCartney described him as, as one of the most influential people of the London 60s too. Wow. <laughs> um, hello to joining us tonight. It's uh, nice to see some of our team watching us. So next up, we couldn't finish our Clan of the Month episode without mentioning Jamie Fraser who's the leading man in our favourite TV show, Outlander. If you're anything like us, then you'll have been glued to the series that first aired in 2016. Um, I actually, upon a customer's recommendation, binged it over the first lockdown. I was absolutely hooked. So uh, set yourself some time and get started if you haven't already. If you're yet to watch Outlander, then fear not. We won't give anything away. We're just going to do a quick roundup with no spoilers. So don't worry. So Outlander is a drama series based upon the novels written by American author Diana Gabaldon. She began writing a novel in the late 1980s as an exercise to learn the novel writing process. This very luckily became Outlander, which was the first volume in the series, and it was published in 1991. Since then, she's published eight more out of a planned ten novels in the series, so we've got a few more to come. 
So the story focuses on World War II nurse Claire Randall, who finds herself time travelling to 18th century Scotland, where she meets Highlander Jamie Fraser. Uh, he was actually inspired by an episode of Doctor Who, in which the Doctor meets a Scotsman from the 1740s named Jamie McCrimmon. Although much of the stories shown in Outlander are fictionalised, they are actually a lot of details that are based in fact or are inspired by tales of the real clan Fraser. So you might be able to spot a few things if you start watching. We guarantee that when you do watch, you'll be totally hooked. If you want to go for an Outlander-inspired Fraser look, then um, we would recommend the Fraser Hunting Weather Tartan. And Anna is actually modelling one of our brand new Serapes in the tartan this evening. So if uh, you fancy getting a bit of the 18th century style going, then uh, that's the one to, to choose. Good one to watch. And also, if you're in Scotland, good one to go and explore some of the places where Outlander was filmed because there's some really quite fun to spot these little places. So during our Clan of the Month, I've been really lucky to chat to lots of different Frasers. And um, one influential Fraser I've been talking to is Ewan Cooper in Australia, who looks after the Fraser Clan Society out there. And he's been telling me all about the events that they normally run, sadly, a few of them cancelled just now but hopefully one of their Highland games is still going ahead in April in this plan and um, but he's also been sharing with me their Strawberry Fields newsletter so if there's any Frasers out there who want to learn more about what goes on in Australia with the clan then um, sign up to their newsletter and that will keep you up to date and um, their details are all on our Fraser clan page and Emily will maybe pop them up here as well for you. And Emily's also been speaking to Graham, who's the editor of the Clan Fraser Society of Scotland in the UK. Um, and he's been sharing his latest editions of the newsletter with us. And later this month, watch out for an interview with Donald Fraser Clark, who is the Society event organiser. And he's going to tell us all about the event he's hoping to line up despite COVID. So this is one that will not be cancelled. The Frasers will not be beaten. So keep an eye out for the blog um, coming up later in the month all about that. So what about questions, Monia? Have we got any questions this evening? We do. So the first one is... <laughs> the meaning behind the colours of the many, many cartons, all 14 of them. So as a, you, some people might imagine that there's maybe a codified system or symbolism to all the colours in the tartan. Uh, for example, red means courage or white means purity. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't exist. Um, the colours aren't quite as simple as that. Uh, but speaking of the tartan historically, you can draw a few conclusions from the colour. For example, red was a very expensive colour to obtain with natural dyes. So, um, like the Fraser has a lot of red, some of the Frasers have a lot of red in them. So, um, wearing a tartan with a lot of red in might mean that you were quite wealthy. Um, or if you're wearing a bright coloured tartan, you might be trying to show off your status. Whereas the dark earth tone tartans, like the hunting, might be chosen to blend in with the environment, as the name would suggest, by someone on the hunt. Um, or if you just wanted to generally stay hidden. There we go. Another question we've got here um, is where the Fraser's fought at the Battle of Culloden. So as we know from the stories we've told tonight, the Fraser's are very well known for their fighting spirit and involvement in just about every battle. And so it's probably unsurprising to know that, yes, they did participate in the Jacobite Risings and the Battle of Culloden. I think that's probably the end of our questions. I can't see any more on there, Monia. Um, no. nope, <laughs> this month's obviously a very exciting month. Monia has been putting up, although our regular store is currently closed due to government restrictions, and um, we have still changed the window. So if you're going out for a walk around town, you can see Big Burns is now up in the window and we're full on ready to celebrate. Um, Scotland National Bard later this month. So we've got lots going on um, with poetry, haggis and whiskey. Usually there'd be a good Kaylee, but that might be via Zoom, I think, this year. So next week on the sofa, we have James McSween from our famous, fam famous and favourite haggis brand, um, McSween. And he's 
um, popped into the shop in Edinburgh to tell us his story. So that will be a good one to follow. And up on the website now, we do have our Burns Night boxes as well. So if you want to celebrate at home, then there's a whole box of goodies that you can buy um, that will allow you to do that um, and not miss out on too much fun, even if we are locked in. So finally, don't miss out on our poetry competition. Now, I don't know, Monia, if you've got your entry in yet. But what we're asking is for people to send us a rendition of their favourite piece of Burns poetry or your very own creation. Um, and there you will have the chance of winning our January competition. So on our social media, you can find the link where you just upload your video, send it in to us. And at the end of January, we shall pick some winners. So lots going on this month. We might be locked in, but that's not holding us back. So I think that's the end of our tour of the Fraser clan. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next week to talk everything haggis.